Hello everybody and welcome to Red Weapon Theory episode uh, 6 and this is talking about grapples and disarms um, from the from the order and uh, so Dak and Dozer from the order and we're going to talk about those two methodologies and some theories behind it and some alternatives that you may um, we invite you to try these um, so with covering those two um, first I want to talk about is grapples uh, something that's very basic dag here Belgar it's a full contact sport right and everybody everybody kind of enjoys that but I don't feel that especially from a red perspective that we take advantage of that uh, that we didn't take advantage of that enough so with a red you have to real realize that you have a free hand you have a free hand to do a lot of different things um, and that includes grappling picking up another punch shield uh, disarming and we'll go into a couple of details on that but using this extra hand to your advantage is something that can make you a better red fighter um, in general so uh, first off talking about grappling and we're going into that in detail what a lot of these are recommendations and a lot of the theories behind it are recommendations uh, but the theory that I recommend behind grappling is when you want to execute a grapple when's the best time to execute a grapple uh, and the best time, in my opinion, to get, go for a grapple is when you are engaging on an, a difficult opponent that chances are you're going to lose to. He has the advantage against you, but that there are two of you. So if you can imagine this situation, I have a friend. We don't have a third person here, but I have a friend. And we're squaring off against Mr. Dozer here, and he's good. He's going to kill me and him. You know, maybe it's my first time fighting. I don't really know what to do, but I know how to grapple, right? And he's good. He's been a knight. He's a good fighter, whatever and he could take us down together. What you can do in this situation is you, one of you can execute that grapple while the other person, while he's tied up, the other person commits for the kill. And in that situation, I may or may not die, but your chances of winning and killing him increase greatly. So you would come in, you would block his shot or whatnot, and you would tie up for a general bear hug. Uh, while he's tied up, you're really defenseless you can either drop your weapon, you can hold on to it, and the other guy comes in. Another thing I want to cover with grappling is you need to keep it simple. There's a lot of, there's a lot of videos out there where crazy judo grapples, grabbing the hands, arms, legs. Uh, when, when you get this close, a lot of stuff happens very quickly. That could be a blue weapon, that could be a green, it could be, there could be other people near him. It gets pretty chaotic pretty darn quickly and you need to keep it simple and practice the foundation and the simple aspects of grappling and get those down before you can even consider the more uh, complicated stuff. So a simple grapple is a bear hug. And the bear hug works. It locks up his hands, prevents him from, from getting that weapon, but if you don't execute it good enough and he's got a free hand, he can still stingray tail you and hit you like he just did. So keep it simple. Don't go for any crazy throws. Most of the stuff is illegal. Trips and throws are illegal anyways. But the simple bear hug is something I would invite you to do. Execute a nice, simple, clean bear hug with your buddy, and you can usually take out more experienced fighters with ease without even losing your own body, and you guys can both make it out of the fight pretty effective and pretty quickly um, by keeping it simple, quick, and executing it cleanly. Uh, that is pretty much... Uh, within, without, I'm not going to go into details on all the different types of grapples. We will do that with disarms, but that's a different method. Um, a grapple, just so you guys know, a real quick review, is when you grab the person's body. If I'm wearing armor and he's not, you can grab the weapon. And that's, that's what we'll loosely consider a disarm or a weapon manipulation. But when you grab his arm, his leg, his body, or anything else, that becomes the grapple initiation. And a lot of times, when you grab a weapon, he will grab for you, and he will initiate the grapple himself. And so if I grab his weapon, you can grab my arm at this point. Now you are free to do maybe a bear hug or anything like that. So a lot of times going in and outright initiating the grapple is sometimes not often very wise to do. And from a Red's perspective, even though you have a free hand, it's many times better to just keep that distance and go back to the basics, which we talked about in other videos. Um, but again, if you have a buddy and a teammate, Sometimes it is good to just go in straight for that grapple, go for that bear hug, and oftentimes it will yield you a kill. Next, um, I want to talk about is the disarms. Now we'll go into some details about all the different types of disarms you can do, 
with the different weapon types, you having a red, okay? Um, this is rep red weapon theory, and there's a lot of other uh, disarms you can do with other types of weapons, poles, spears, uh, but because you have a free hand and a red, we're just going to keep it limited to that discussion. But if you'll imagine Dozer here is going to be an opponent of mine with different weapon types. So we'll talk about that. Um, as I said before, the disarm is something where you're grabbing their weapon. And the first, if you are reversing, the first discussion I'll talk about is a red versus red. And I'm going to let Dozer attack me on this one. And what he's going to do is he's going to do the handle roll around my weapon. He's going to come up on me and he's going to connect handles and he's going to curl it around and he's going to strike me. I will show that in detail. You connect with the handle at a cross check. You're not touching their body. You're not grabbing their hands or anything. And you're curving the handle around and you're striking them. And then your, your hand actually comes around on top. It comes around on top and it goes over. Very simple, but if executed quickly, if an enemy charges you, you can, you can do that mode and you can strike very quickly and brush them off to the side and move on. That's a, that's a very good weapon uh, manipulation. The other one you want to do is just a simple grabbing their weapon. If they come up on you, you grab it. Now you still have a blue from here and you can strike them right above the back and you can kill them. You're controlling their weapon without actually getting into the messy parts. Um, real quick before I go further, this is something that I wanted to cover as well. With these grapple and manipulations, uh, practice them a lot. You try, if you're going home and you try one day and you battle and you try to grab for that weapon, you're going to probably miss and you're going to instantly die. Don't let that get you down because it takes a lot of practice. But when you do get that, you're going to feel good. And you got to practice it a lot. You're going to die a lot. You're going to get frustrated. And I think that's one of the main reasons people don't try to grapple because it's extremely risky. You're putting it all out there. You're putting it all out there. And if you whiff, if you don't execute it well, you're dead. But don't let that get you down because usually you respawn anyway, right? So um, it's probably one of the bigger things to take away from this video. Keep practicing it until you perfect it, and then you can actually rely on it as a tool in the combat. So let's go with your next weapon style. Let's talk about spears, red versus spears. Um, how do you grapple a spear? We talked about it in other videos, but I'm just going to show you um, two tricks you can do. One that I use and one that Dozer uses um, that we would like to share with you guys for uh, your benefit. Uh, this, is a, this is a little bit of a gimmick, but it's something that I use, it's very convenient. The hand-on weapon rule is if a weapon strikes your hand, go ahead, it's hand-on weapon, right? There's nothing that says you can't hold it like this. This is still hand-on weapon, okay? It allows you to quickly re return. You see where this is going. If Dozer tries to strike, I got it. My hand's on the weapon, it's grappling his, if it's a dual omnibladed weapon, it's hand on weapon. The whole thing is a kit and caboodle. But if he if he pulls it back and he sees me doing this, you're ready to fight. On, off, on, off. And this will scare green fighters when you have that, when you're doing that. They know what you're doing with this. You can use it almost like a, uh, a repellent to keep fighters away. If you're fighting and you see a green guy coming over, you can do that and it'll almost, you're almost ready. It's almost as like a shield. And you can you can use that and you can have your hand right back to strike. It's just a very quick flippy motion. The second thing, we'll trade weapons here. Dozer's gonna show you the weapon manipulation that he likes to use with spears that we didn't cover in other videos. But what he's basically doing is he's using the inertia of the spear to create a, a, a turbine pattern and then he gets control of it. So I'm gonna stab at him. He's gonna show you how he does it. And he's gonna wipe around the, the circular motion. Here, just give it, just give it out. Okay. And when you're on the line, a lot of the time, back up a little bit. Sure. When you're on the line, a lot of the time, there'll be this dead area right here to where the spear kind of has you. If they, they strike, you know, that's not obviously not a spear that's glaive, so it's a little shorter. But there'll be this little dead range that you can't really close in on them. But there's that, there's that one spear that's just holding you back. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to get your weapon up under the spear, flip, and drive. And a lot of the time, that if, even if that spear guy has a sidearm, you're still out of range of their side arm or whatever. And their spear is going to be up in the air. So, I mean, they can't really bow staff as easy, like as when, you know, typically if you just knock it to the ground and charge on them. So that's something that I like to do, just flip and drive. So. And you move in while you're doing it, that's important. You don't just flip it up and you leave it. You're, he's, he's this close when he commits his strike. Yeah. You, want, you want, because if you don't do it quick enough, I'm going to bring it back down and I'm going to stab you. So those are, those are two good things that, we can, that you can use against the spear. Um, 
for, for weapon disarms. Um, another thing I want to talk about is archers, our bane, right? They curse us on the battlefield. They make us hate our lives. They, they, uh, they really make us hide a lot. And there's a lot of things you can do against them. You can put on a back shield, you know, and you're probably going, why are we talking about disarms and, and whatnot with an archer and a yellow? Um, I will tell you right now, and this is maybe something to kind of enlighten you, 90% of the time in my experience, and I don't know about yours, it's more viable to just break the bow and not the archer behind it. In fact, I always just break the bow. If you kill the archer, he can come back to life. If you kill the archer, someone else can pick up the bow. If you kill the bow, it is out of the field permanently. His arrows are useless. Everything about him is useless. 90% of the time, archers are not ready for that. And most of the time, when you assault an archer, he's got what in front of him. He's got a shield, he's got off hands, he's got all sorts of crap. Not on top of that, he's got other fighters coming in, and you don't got a lot of time, to be honest. All you have to do is touch his bow. All you have to do, it's a terrible explanation for a bow, but it works. All you have to do is touch his bow. Bow broken. If you die, you can look at that archer, and he's going to drop his bow, and he's going to go, what do I do now? He's got a bag full of quivers, and he's got a blue and a, and a sorry buckler, and he's going to have to fight like that. That's the best you can do against a yellow fighter, and that's what I recommend you go for every time. Um, the bow broken is probably the best thing you can do against them, and it's pretty short and simple, and just wanted to bring that up. Um, versing blue fighters, two different types of blue fighters in general, if they have a sword. And one minute, I'll go ahead and grab the shield here. If they got, if they got a sword and board, and this is our blue. If they got a sword and board, and their sword, in general, this is when you don't want to grapple. This is when you don't want to try to disarm. This is when you just you want to keep your best advantage, and that's keeping a range. You will break their shield if you stay at a range. They want, I want to get to him, obviously, right? And if you let me get that close, you should either be backpedaling or you should be moving to keep that range. Um, the only exception is if this is a flail, and if it's a flail haft, you want to try to continue to be either blocking or try to grapple for that haft. Uh, grappling for the haft's risky, but it's probably about the only, what I would consider or recommend, any type of grappling effort uh, beyond a bear hug, if you're going to try to grapple the haft of a, of a flail. And, what, and when you try for it and you get it, again, you have a free hand. I do not. That is a good advantage of that. That's something you can do, and you're tied up, at least, again. Um, but against the good sword and borders, I would, again, try to just block that shot and go for a bear hug and tie up all my, my stuff. You can't kill anybody with this. So getting this under control is important, but if you take away the shield by keeping range control, I would say that's more favorable. Uh, and I would recommend that you would stay. You wouldn't try to do a grapple or discar disarm in any way versus a sword and border. So, um, I think that covers all of the uh, all the weapon types. Uh, talking about pole arms, I know a lot of people ask about pole arms. What do you do? You can do a combination of things with uh, the, the dozer spin. Um, you can also try to grab it like a spear, uh, and then you can you can also try to just straight up charge the fighter like we've talked about in the other videos where you get it to the ground, you can step on it, you can move it out of the way. Uh, it's a combination of the grapple disarm effects that you can go into. Um, but other than that, I'll leave you guys for discussion. I just want to thank you guys. I know this is kind of basic um, without any, any real active live examples. Uh, but those are, those are some of the basic, again, keep it basic, keep it simple and it will it will do the work for you. So thank you guys and uh enjoy hope you enjoyed the episode.